think we need quite a lot of analysis and planning and we need to see financial inclusion and what we're trying to achieve with financial inclusion as part of a much bigger uh, program that looks at what is necessary in different communities. If you think about uh, some of the policies that developing countries, for example, have in terms of a drive to financial inclusion, what typically happens is that they are those who are, perhaps we could describe them as marginally excluded. These are people who perhaps are income earners, uh, regular income earners, but for various reasons have chosen not to engage with the financial sector. And those, of course, are the low-hanging fruit. So relatively easy, easily with perhaps some fairly um, small price incentives on the part of the financial institutions to reduce costs of access. Um, you would find that those people become included. But very quickly you'll reach a kind of a maximum level that has to do with unemployment levels. And so clearly you cannot achieve universal financial access if people don't have jobs because they're not going to then spend money they don't have on financial services like a bank account or insurance. Um, so you need to couple your financial inclusion drive with a real policy of investigating what kind of industrial strategies perhaps one might have to encourage employment, um, what kind of uh, programs one can institution, institutionalize to perhaps um, re-educate um, people with skills that are no longer ne necessary in the digital environment so that they have a chance of re-employment and so on. And so it's really a full range of activities. Financial inclusion, of course, we all would love to have it and we'd like to see it as something that people can have to reduce the friction in their lives. But it's not the most important thing.